एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू फोर्स गैलेक्सी होप लेट डूइंग गुड सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो आई वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम थियोटिकल क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन ट्रिगर्स ओके एंड इफ यू हैव मोर क्वेश्चन विच आर आस्ड बाई यू इन द इंटरव्यू रिलेटेड टू ट्रिगर्स देन यू कैन शेयर सेम ओवर द कॉमेंट सेक्शन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वैन आई विल गोइंग टू शेयर द स्नैरियो बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑन ट्रिगर विल कवर द सेम क्वेश्चन द शेयर बाई यू ऑन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन ओके so let's start with today's video and our very first question comes is what are the different types of triggers we have in salesforce so this is the very basic questions okay and you must know what are the different types of triggers and when to use which triggers based on the requirement okay so we have basically two types of triggers the one is after and another one is before okay and now the next comes is when to use which trigger or when to go with which based on our requirement okay so now let's first discuss the before triggers so the before triggers are used when we want to perform logic or any automation on the same object okay and before it is saved into the database okay like suppose i have a requirement on whenever the account record is inserted so before it's insert do check whether the email inserted by the uh, user is correct or not that is the format is correct or not if it is not correct then it should show, uh, throw an exception or show him an error that is the email you enter is not correct so in this case we are performing or checking this validation before the record is saved into the database okay and on the same object only that is on account so in this case we will going to go with the before triggers and here in the before triggers we are not allowed to perform any dmls okay why because the records are still not saved into the database so we cannot perform any dmls here okay so like suppose if you are performing any validation and all you just need to go work on the list of records and perform your logic over there and need not to put any insert update there in this before events okay now the next comes is the after trigger so when to go or when to use with after triggers okay as per the execution order after triggers are fire when our database is saved into the database okay so after the save of this record now i want to perform any automation or any logic on the records which are related to this object or to this records so in this case we will go with the after triggers like suppose account and contact are there and my requirement is like as soon as the account is inserted then automatically its contact should also be inserted okay so in this case if i want to relate the contact to the account then i must need the account id and this can only be possible if my uh, record is saved into the database okay so in this case what we will do we will go with the after triggers okay and as soon as my record is inserted my trigger will fire and it will it will going to uh, pick up this account id and creates its related contact okay so hope you guys understood this and let me know if you still have any queries related to this Okay, and here related to DMS, yes, we are allowed to perform the DMS in the after insert because here we have the record IDs on which we can perform our DMS. Okay, now the next question comes is what are the different variables we have in triggers? Uh, you must have heard about this trigger dot new, trigger dot new map, trigger dot old, and trigger dot old map. So what are they and what are their uses and the difference between all? Okay, so. Trigger dot new. This will going to return you the list of a subjects. Okay, list list of records due to which my trigger is invoked or my trigger is fired. Okay, let's suppose on uh, if you are inserting the account records and on insert if you have written any trigger. So the list which you are inserting on the database. Uh, so before if the trigger is on before then before its insertion in the database the trigger will fire. Okay and the list of records which you are inserting will be termed as trigger dot new okay so in this trigger dot new we will have all this list of triggers and like similarly we have trigger dot new map so here what happens in this trigger dot new map we have a map where the key values will be the ids and the value will be the complete record here okay so this is and similarly 
and this trigger dot new and trigger dot new map will going to have the new versions of the record that is the uh, records which we are inserting or the del uh, updating so the both the variables will have the new version of the records okay and similarly we have trigger dot all and trigger dot all map so in this we have older versions of records like suppose if i will move i if i have written the trigger on the update so in this case i am checking the older value and the new value so the value which is already inserted in the database or already present in this record will be termed as the older version or will be uh, or can be get in the trigger dot all or the trigger dot all map and the value which i am change with which i am changing this record will be termed as the trigger dot new or the trigger dot new map okay so this is the different that is one contains the older version and one contains the new version of the record values okay so our next question comes is so this is also a most common question that is the recursion what is recursion in triggers and how we can avoid this okay here what happens if you have written any trigger and this using this trigger the result you get from this trigger again firing or calling this trigger and again and again this is going on in loop then we will going to uh, call this as recursion of triggers and my trigger is firing again and again so how we can avoid this so there are various methods to avoid this okay so the first one which we will discuss which is also very famous that is using the static boolean variable okay you can use this static boolean variable and you can uh, or a flag we can say and you can here assign with uh, so in the starting you can assign it with one value that is if the flag is true and you are executing all your logic inside this value or inside this condition and once your logic is completed at last you are making this value as false and now next time if recursion happens then because of because of this flag value it will not going to execute the logic and you will be safe from this recursion of triggers okay so there is one drawback here that is this logic no doubt will going to be run for 200 records okay but if you have more than 200 records then your logic will not fail but your records will be skipped here okay so as we all know that our trigger runs in a two batch of 200 records and if suppose we have 400 records then the two batches will be executed here and the two times the trigger will going to fire okay in this case if you use uh, this static boolean variable to avoid this recursion then your 200 records will be process uh, then your 200 records will process successfully but remaining 200 will not going to be processed because the value because of this boolean value which we have changed in end of the logic okay so the very uh, safe method which i suggest you to avoid this recursion is to collect the set of ids on which the logic is already performed and as soon as it will next time it will move to the condition then it will going to check the values if it uh, in, if it contains the id or not and based on this id it will going to process the records okay and if you want to see the demo so the here already a video is uploaded on this how to avoid the recursion so here all different methods are discussed so you can go and watch out the uh, watch out that video so a links a link also i have shared in the description section okay so the next question here comes is can we make a call out from the apex triggers okay so yes we can make the call out directly this is not possible because the trigger runs synchronously okay and the trigger will not going to uh, and the and we if we make a call out from here then we do not know how uh, or trigger will not going to wait for the response because we do not know how, how much time it will going to take for a call out to get a response okay so in this case what we can do we can make a call out from using the asynchronous methods like the future method which is the most famous here uh, when we want to make a call out from the triggers so you can make a call out using asynchronous methods okay directly this is not possible here so the next question comes is what is the difference between database.insert 
and in simple insert DML operation. So this is also uh, most common questions which were usually asked in the interviews. Okay. So many of time you, uh, we, we usually use the simple insert operation and the update operation okay, in our triggers and epics classes and all. And many times we also use database.insert and database.update and all. Okay. So what is the difference between both here? So if you are using simple insert operation, so in this case, what will happen if any of the record get any exception or uh, is going is missing any record required fields in the records, then in this case, what will happen? You will going to get an error or any exceptions which we will going to be cached using this try and catch blocks okay and here all your records will be rolled back no partially save or nothing will going to be happen here okay so all your records will going to be failed here now next if instead of using this in, uh, simple dml operation if you use this database.insert or database.update so in this case what will going to happen if you get any exception in any of the record then the records which are throwing any exception will only will going to roll back and remaining other which are correct will be saved or processed successfully without giving any exception so here partially shares here partially save or update will going to happen okay and here you will not going to get any exception so it is always better to go with database.insert and database.update dms instead of using sim single or simple insert update dms okay so uh, this is also comes under the best practices to move with database.insert and update dms so the next question comes is the trigger syntax okay and and obviously if you are going with the developer roles in your interview you will all, always be asked to write and trigger here so here it will going to check your trigger syntax how you will going to write and uh, whether you are using handler or not so it is always uh, comes under best practice if you are using handler and not writing your logic directly inside the triggers okay so always so always remember the trigger syntax many of you uh, get confused here and write the wrong syntax okay so this is should be so this should also be known to you what is the trigger syntax okay next question comes is what if i want to show any error over the screen using the triggers okay so like suppose the scenario what if i want to show any error over the screen if a user is trying to uh, insert any wrong record or updating with any wrong value so in this case how we can achieve this using triggers okay so uh, like suppose the same we used to do with the validation rules okay so what if i want to validate any record using the triggers so in this case we have a function in the triggers that is add error so using this function we can easily validate our records like suppose uh, you have written any trigger on before insert and before update and here in this you are checking whether the email entered by the user is in correct format or not and if it is not in correct format using this add error function you will going to show an exception to the user that is the format is not correct for the given email instead of writing a validation rule you are uh, doing this with the you can also do with this with the triggers okay so the next question comes is what is the read only error and why do we face this type of errors and what is its solution okay so these types of error comes in the after triggers okay and here in the after triggers the record are still in the read only state okay and we are now trying to update or perform dms on this read only records okay because of which we are not able to update them and used to face these types of error okay so directly performing any dms or logic over this record directly on the after trigger list so what we can do we can create a new instance of the same object okay and then assigning the ids to this new instance and then updating them or performing dms then we will not going to get this type of error okay so on the screen also you can see how we can do this okay so the next question comes is what are the best practices to write and trigger okay so this is also the most uh, most frequently asked question in the triggers so the number one is always try to write a trigger one trigger over the one object okay and in this trigger 
you should have a you should uh, perform a logic in the handler so do never do not try or write a logic directly inside the triggers okay so now the next comes is never to perform dml inside the loops okay never to perform queries or the sqls inside the loop okay and always try to write a trigger that is a, which can run over the multiple records that is the your trigger should be qualified okay never to go with the single trigger records that is only running with for the single records so the bulkification is must okay and if you are making any callouts from the trigger it should be done asynchronously that is using the asynchronous method okay not directly from the triggers and i think it will also not going to allow you directly make a call out from the triggers okay and the next is try to handle the exception or use database.dml or update operations these type of dml instead of going with simple insert or update okay and so like this there are so many which you can add here okay so you should be aware about these types of best practices also and if you are writing a trigger in your interview then all these practices should be followed okay so many a times i have also seen that you uh, you are saying that we, we should follow this we should follow this for the best practices for the triggers but when it comes to write a code you yourself not following the best practices there you are writing your logic inside the same trigger only and also making the query inside the loop so this this what says that you you only just go through the best practices and you never apply the best practices on your code okay if you are habitual to the best practice then obviously in your interview also you will going to write your trigger with the best practices only okay so always keep in mind to write a trigger with the best practices only these okay. are the few questions which i have discussed with you regarding the triggers and next video will try to upload based on the scenario based question in which i will try to give you the different scenarios and the solution to be which trigger we should go with in which scenarios and all and if you have more questions related to triggers which were asked by you in your interview so do share in the comment section okay and i, I will try to cover all of them okay so thank you for watching this video we'll meet you soon in the next video till then take care goodbye